Well, good afternoon. On behalf of Texas Tech University, it is my pleasure and my privilege to welcome you and to thank you for being here for this ribbon cutting. This event is more than a celebration of this beautiful building and the state-of-the-art facilities it provides for our students and faculty. Rather, today offers another opportunity to reflect on and to appreciate what is possible when the dreams of visionaries have the support of public officials, communities, industry groups, and individuals who are bound together in a spirit of cooperation for the mutual benefit of our state. Red Raiders around the world take great pride in this occasion. Raiders for people of West Texas, but a cause for celebration for the entire state. This extraordinary occasion is made even more special by the history that has brought us to this moment. Next year, we'll celebrate the centennial anniversary of Texas Tech University. In 1923, Texas Tech was created to serve the communities and to address the needs of West Texas. But the benefits of our university have not been contained to these South Plains. Our dedication remains to West Texas, but our impact is felt across the state and around the world. Now, nearly a century later, the Texas Tech University School of Veterinary Medicine will address needs that are particularly acute in the rural communities and the industries of West Texas. But we can be sure that the benefits will be statewide. You have to look no further than the students and faculty to be confident in such a claim. In August, we were here as the first class became, went through orientation. It is as clear to me today as it was then that the students who make up this first class truly embody the spirit and the purpose of the vet school. They are doers and self-sorters. They came here with a goal and a purpose. Many come from rural or sparsely populated areas with an intent to serve that kind of community or the large animal industry that is so important to our state. The many opportunities that await them and the service they will provide would not be possible without the support of Governor Abbott and the Texas legislature but also the backing of Amarillo, Lubbock, and many other communities across this region, as well as numerous individuals and businesses who held strong in the belief in this venture. Because of philanthropic gifts, partnership, and moral support, we are now training the next generation of veterinarians here in Amarillo. I know Chancellor Mitchell will be more specific in offering acknowledgements and recognitions, but at this time, I would like to invite Michael Lewis, Chairman of the Texas Tech System Board of Regents, to come forward and make his comments. Thank you for that introduction, President Skovinik. And I also want to thank all of you who are here celebrating with us today. It is because of your time, support, and efforts that we've been able to achieve our shared vision for making Texas Tech University School of Veterinary Medicine a reality. On a personal note, today means so much to me to be part of such a wonderful occasion. I grew up in West Texas, very much part of the agriculture industry on my family's ranch in Olney. And so I know how important and impactful agriculture is to our heritage and our prosperity in Texas. The School of Veterinary Medicine is accomplished, an accomplishment that has not only elevated the entire Texas Tech University system and allowed us to provide greatly needed educational opportunities for our students, but it's one that has also given us the opportunity to answer the tremendous needs of our communities and to serve those who provide critical resources and services to our state and region, also known as food. I extend my sincerest gratitude to each and every one of you 
It has been such a privilege to serve on the Texas Tech University System Board of Regents during this historic time. I want to thank our system and the university leadership. I want to recognize and thank my fellow board of regent members, current and past, our previous board chairman, Chancellors Ted Mitchell and Bob Duncan for all the work and dedication that they've done. I see that many of you from the state are here. We also could not have done all this without the support of our Texas lawmakers, and I'd like to give a big thank you to our legislators as well. In 2019, at the conclusion of the 86th legislative session, Governor Abbott signed into the legislation to fund the vet school, which was a major milestone that made all of this possible. Today, I have the distinct honor and pleasure to introduce the governor of our great state of Texas, Greg Abbott. And while there's not much that I can say that you don't already know about Governor Abbott, he began his first year of service in 2015 is the 48th governor of the state of Texas. And during that time, he's led our state to continued and heightened prosperity. I want to personally thank him for not only being a principal leader, but a garden, guardian of our values, our economy, and our people. Thank you, Governor Abbott. He also has been a true supporter of Texas Tech, our entire system, this region. He has more than ties to our system than you might know. He was born in Wichita Falls, which is the hometown of our newest member, Midwestern State University. I believe maybe your mom went there as well. He also attended law school for his first year at Texas Tech before finishing his law degree at Vanderbilt. So in several respects, we can claim him as an honorary Red Raider and we'll do so. <laughs> We're very honored to have Governor Abbott with us today. Please join me in welcoming Governor Abbott. Well, thank you, Michael. I tell you what, I brought my Red Runner jacket with me. How about that for a jacket right there? Can I make you want to do guns up or something like that? Uh, Michael, thank you for the very kind introduction. Uh, Chancellor, good, good to see you again. If I can get around here to see you. President Skubanek, thank you uh, for your service. And I particularly want to call out and recognize the tremendous service uh, of the members of the Texas legislature. Yes, I was the one who signed uh, the appropriation that funded uh, this tremendous school. Uh, but the only way that I was able to sign it is because uh, members of the Texas legislature uh, were able to uh, do what they needed to do to pass the legislation to get it to my desk. I would like to ask that each of the members of the Texas legis legislature, either currently or at the time uh, that this bill was originally pa passed, to please stand up and be recognized. So as was kind of pointed out, today is, uh, is the result of a team effort. It's the combination of Texas Tech leaders who have been involved and focused on trying to achieve this goal for decades. Uh, it's the byproduct of, of tremendous work put in by state legislators as well as by local officials and benefactors, all coming together, addressing a need by the state of Texas, while at the same time advancing the standing and the programs of Texas Tech University and its system. You know, the point has been made twice already, but it's worth emphasizing uh, a key point to put all of this in context. Uh, and that is, it was in 1916, when Texas had about 4.5 million residents in the, oh, in the entire state. At that time, the leaders of the state of Texas thought that there was the need for the state of Texas to finally have a veterinarian school. And they established one back in 1916 at Texas A&M. Well, it took more than 100 years to double that number. Since 1916, 
Texas has added about 25 million people to our population, as well as countless animals. There are now more states in America than there are vet schools in the United States. And none of those states are more important than the great state of Texas. We raise the livestock that feeds the world. We're the home to the most elite deer ranches in the entire world. We may have more exotic game ranches in Texas today than Lubbock had residents back in 1916. <laughs> Texas is adding population faster and more than any state in the United States. And the same goes with regard to adding and growing our businesses where Texas ranks number one in America. International cheese businesses like Casake, uh, recently located here in Amarillo, as well as Loprino Foods, located in Lubbock. They are located in those regions to be near the thousands of dairy cattle that produce the milk that makes their cheese. In short, it is past time for Texas to add a second better aimed school in our great state. <laughs> Texas Tech leaders relentlessly, relentlessly focused on that vision. They persisted through multiple legislative hurdles. They organized at the local level, and they gained benefactors to bolster their prospects. In short, Texas Tech won the day, and I was proud to have the opportunity to sign the funding to establish the Texas Tech University School of Veterinary Medicine. So this is beyond just an extraordinary day. This is a rare day. Rarely are vet schools added. This is an outstanding addition to an exceptional university. This is another substantial step up the educational ranking ladder for Texas Tech. When I became governor, I was kind of shocked that Texas lagged behind other states in tier one rated universities. My goal was to double the number of tier one universities during my tenure. Well, Texas Tech soon was added to tier one universities after I was elected. Since then, more universities have been added, and now in the past eight years, Texas has more than doubled the number of tier one universities in our state, and Texas now has more tier one research universities than any state in the United States of America. But here's the deal. Being a tier one university for Texas Tech is like Texas Tech going to the NCAA basketball tournament. It's a great start, but it is not the destination they seek. There are greater heights to achieve, and Texas Tech is doing all the right things to reach those heights with the opening and addition of this tremendous vet school. So congratulations to Texas Tech and uh, Chancellor. I brought with me several things. Can't come without things to give out. Uh, on behalf of the state of Texas, as governor of the state of Texas, I'm, I have issued this proclamation effective today, recognizing the Texas Tech University School of Veterinary Medicine established in Amarillo, Texas, April 22nd, 2022, along with a flag flown over the state capitol today, going to Texas Tech University. Chancellor, thank you. There you go. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. 50 years ago, the state and the citizens saw this coming. At that time, I was in fourth grade at Moselle Johnson Elementary in Longview, Texas. Now, like all of you, I know that the wheels of government are slow to turn, but really, 50 years? Come on. <laughs> but you know what? It was worth the wait. An achievement of this magnitude requires a lot more than wishful thinking. It requires resolve. It requires a dogged determination. It requires tenacity. It requires that throngs of people from a variety of backgrounds coalesce upon a single vision, a North Star, if you will. Only by doing that can something so important be accomplished. As I look out on this crowd and as I've seen people around the building, 
I see literally dozens and dozens of people who are willing to step up and be counted when it would have been far easier to sit on the sideline. This ribbon cutting today is a testament to your courage. Make no mistake about that. This vet school is, as Dr. Skuvenek said, a victory for the state of Texas and for New Mexico, but it's much more than that. It's a victory for each and every person who is here. The people of Texas and this region needed you, and you answered the call, and for that I will be forever grateful. Our state is blessed for over a century. We have had one of the finest veterinary medical schools in the world run by our friends at College Station. Today, as we cut this ribbon, our state and New Mexico are blessed twice over because we now have two schools with very different missions, but with a common focus on excellence in veterinary medical education. Our journey to get where we are today has been tough, but the people of Texas are tough, and the people of this region are accustomed to challenges. Did you know that there are six major steps in refining iron ore, separating out the particles to find those that can withstand the next step in the process, which is grueling? The second step is crushing those particles in a massive grinder. Without crushing them, you can never get the substrate that you need. But when you have the right substrate, and when you grind it and crush it, all that you have to do is add fire and heat it up and heat it up and heat it up until it's red hot. Once you've done that, you've got steel. That's the process we've all been through. We were screened, we were separated out, and there were times that we were crushed. But once the heat was added, once those flames were turned up, the outcome was inevitable. The vet school standing behind me is the product of the steel will of the people of this community, this region, and this state. Henry David Thoreau, said, what you get by achieving goals is not as important as what you become by achieving those goals. Our state and this region desperately needed us to achieve this goal, but the added bonus of what we've become in the process, a unified collection of individuals and communities across Texas, across West Texas, and across New Mexico, all speaking with one voice and focusing on one single vision, that North Star. Well, that's the real steel. And that is what I will be forever thankful for and why I consider myself blessed to be part of this community. Now, I have a list of people that I'm supposed to name off and groups that I'm supposed to name off. But I really can't do this. And we've been laboring over this for days and days, trying to figure out who do you start pointing out? Because you can't. Everybody here had something to do with this school becoming a reality. Everybody. Everybody participates in this. The state of Texas will benefit from it. Our friends in College Station already are benefiting from it with the students that we have. This is truly a team effort. For that, I'm not going to name any specific names, but I am about to call up someone who, because of her singular focus, as the governor was mentioning, her dogged determination about making something a reality, because of her, Amarilloans, West Texans, Texans, and New Mexicans all owe a debt of gratitude. And I'm talking about Mayor Ginger Nelson. I'm 
so glad the wind was invited to be a part of our event today. It is a member of our family up here in the Panhandle, right? You know, one early Saturday morning in the hometown that Kevin and I grew up in, in Spearman, we got on a yellow school bus with about 20 other teenagers. We sat down on the green vinyl seats and with the windows down and the cool spring air blowing in a little bit of Texas Panhandle dust, we went on a field trip and drove about 15 miles south to visit Adobe Walls. We stood on the prairie and we measured the distance with our own eyes of the longest shot in Texas history, the one that Billy Dixon made in 1874. We've turned two centuries since that long shot, and I think we stand here today claiming that West Texas and the Texas Tech University School of Veterinary Medicine now claim the bragging rights to being the longest shot in Texas. I agree with Chancellor Mitchell that our team is too big to name individual names. And in the spirit of great Texas pride, none of those people want to be named as individuals. But whether it was the Farm Bureau, the veterinary industry, the businesses, the chambers of commerce, the mayors all across West Texas who joined together to partner with our legislative delegations to make this project happen, it was a West Texas victory that will benefit the entire state of Texas. And I'll tell you that everyone who touched this project and worked on it can testify to having heard these words, you'll never get it done. You don't have the support. You'll never raise the money. This will never happen. But we didn't let others define what we were capable of doing. And now after years of hard work with our project that couldn't be done, the biggest long shot is a reality. So we can look to the future and anticipate the benefits that this school will bring to the Panhandle and to the state of Texas. We have the honor of having the governor here today as our special guest. But I asked another very special guest to come to the podium with me today. This is my friend, Maudie Massey, and she's here representing the voice of our future our future education, our future opportunities, our future business growth, our future growth. And Madi has a message, a very special, mes special message for the governor today. Thank you, Mr. Governor, very much. <laughs> And on behalf of the future and all of West Texas, I will now ask the governor and Texas Tech University, what's next? We can't wait. Thank you so much, Man Nelson. But most of all, thank you for your leadership, your vision, and your tireless commitment to turn a dream, a vision of what could be, into the reality it is today. Amarillo has accepted and welcomed this school with open arms, and we are excited to be a part and contribute to this wonderful community. So thank you very much, Mayor Nelson. Right from the very get-go of establishing this school, we engaged the veterinary profession. Because we need to produce the future of veterinary medicine. And they told us who and what they want to employ and what skills they need to have. 
and we design the whole program around them. And many of the veterinary profession are here today from private practitioners to organized veterinary medicine. And I include Representative Lynn Stuckey here. Thank you for engaging us. But also we have many other veterinarians in the crowd from Dr. Chris Morrow from Mobile Vet Practice and many, many others here that I'm failing to name. But we also are blessed with the presence of the organizations that represent them. Texas Veterinary Medical Association is here, including the president, Tamara Walthall, the immediate past president, Stephen Gola, and the president-elect, Jody Long. And many others from TVMA are here as well. We're also joined by the president of the American Veterinary Association, Jose Arce, today, Jose provides outstanding leadership to almost 100,000 veterinarians nationally. Thank you very much for being here today. You have heard this already today, but Amarillo is a major center, if not the center for agriculture in Texas and the nation and certainly the world. So we're very thankful for all of the industry stakeholders for their presence here today. And this includes the Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Cattle Feeders Association, Texas Southwest Cattle Raisers Association, Texas Association of Dairymen, and many more. Thank you for being here. We're all... <laughs> Texas Tech University System is a wonderful system. It is a great place to work. And today we're joined by the leadership, some of which you have heard, but also too, several deans have made the journey up from Lubbock to Amarillo to celebrate today. Dean Cindy Akers, Dean David Perlmutter, Dean Tim Dodd, and many representatives from other colleges as well. Also, we have the presidents of the Texas Tech Health Science Center and the Texas Tech Health Science Center in El Paso, President Lori Rice Spearman and President Rick Lang, thank you for being here. And I'm thrilled that we are joined by members of the Texas A&M University College of Veterinary Medicine and West Texas A&M University for coming to celebrate today with us. It means so much to us that you have come. While you all are here today to get to celebrate this wonderful event, I would like to just briefly acknowledge those who cannot be here but help form the school. They are very much a part of the school. They are very much part of the fabric of what this school is and who we are. Robert Hall, Carter King, Bud Farr, Charlie Sellers, and Dalton William Horn. At this stage, I would like our truly incredible faculty and staff to wave your hand. Many are here today. It is so very fitting that we get to celebrate today in the Robert L. Duncan Plaza. The message at that time was loud and clear. Chancellor Duncan gave us a bold vision. The decision was also easy that the school needed to be in Amarillo. But the message was also clear that Amarillo does not tolerate doing things by halves. For Amarillo to do it, do it properly. For Amarillo, go big or go home, and that is what we have done. So thank you, Amarillo. <laughs> While the vision was bold, our purpose is simple. It is how we serve rural and regional communities of Texas and beyond, and how we provide access to world-class affordable ed education. 
That's it. There's nothing more, nothing else, nothing less. That is our purpose. And it has driven everything we have done as a school. And serving rural and regional communities begins with purposeful admission and selection of the students that will be part of the program. Our first class is truly amazing. I reckon they might be the best class of veterinary students in the country, but I could be just a little bit biased. But most importantly, these students have become family, they have become friends, they have become colleagues in this journey and we are so excited to work with them. These students are the future of the veterinary medicine profession in Texas and New Mexico. They will contribute to the vibrancy of communities all across Texas and help secure its wonderful future. Our students work with us every day. They help build this program. They will become the measures of our success. With that, I would like to welcome the president of the class, Cassidy Snow, to come and share some words with you. Thank you, Guy. Mr. Governor, elected officials, President Skubanek, Chancellor Mitchell, and so many others gathered today. When I think of our program, there's always one word that jumps out at me, exciting. The word exciting was woven into countless conversations in the months leading up to the start of our school year. It could be heard at the grocery store with those eagerly anticipating our program, within its walls with our soon-to-be mentors, and between our practice partners and our over 800 applicants. Today is exciting. It's almost electric feeling, and that's not my vet school-driven caffeine addiction kicking in. Getting to have you all here today, finally seeing this finished product is an honor. My name is Cassidy Snow. I was born and raised in Austin, but have spent much of my adult life in this ever windy Texas panhandle. The road led that has led me here today is paved with lots of passion and exciting experiences, along with many rejection letters. I, along with so many others, have heard the words, no, please try again, far too many times when it comes to our aspirations. The creation of this incredible program and their desire to look for a different kind of student has finally allowed for a place for me and so many others to succeed. At this time, I would like to recognize my peers. Class of 2025, can you all raise your hands? I know that I am inspired and motivated by each of the magnificent members of my class, and I cannot wait for you all to see the truly incredible doctors that result from this program. I have the phenomenal privilege today to stand in front of you all as our class president, but just one representation of our incredible class. The class that has the unbelievable opportunity to form the traditions and pave the way for the classes to come. The program that we are all a part of today made possible by so many people here today, has allowed us to come together and form this family. We may be from all over with varying passions and personalities, but I can attest to the incredible bond that we all share with one another and are soon to share with the incoming class. Incoming members of the class of 2026, can you all raise your hands as well? I know that I can speak for all of us very confidently when I say that we are so proud to be part of the Texas Tech School of Veterinary Medicine. I know that myself and my peers are eager to continue to meet each and every one of you guys here today and thank you individually for making this program possible. The list of those that worked to get us here today is a very long one and much like the incredible leaders that spoke before me today, I will not try and name it. 
those that contributed time, funds, many sleepless nights, big and small. We are incredibly appreciative of everybody. I am so proud to be a part of the Texas Tech School of Veterinary Medicine and the family that's created by our program and by Texas Tech University. I'm so excited to be standing here today with everyone, sharing in this incredible milestone with our incredible community. We truly cannot wait to make you guys proud. And I think that you'll see that the amazing doctors that are made possible by this program will go on to show that excitement to Texas, New Mexico, and beyond. Thank you all for being here today. From here, it's possible. Wreck em. Thank you, Cassidy. Uh, Ted, uh, I said that you were going to be acknowledging people individually. Since you chose not to, I have that list. <laughs> no, but there are two people I do want to acknowledge. Bob Duncan, it was your vision and your guidance through this process that made this day possible. <laughs> and Dean Guy Lonaragan. He is the perfect person to be the inaugural dean of this School of Veterinary Medicine. So as we find ourselves in the final months of Tech's first century, this School of Veterinary Medicine in this occasion is an inspiring culmination to all that's been achieved in this last 100 years. But today, is not about Texas Tech. For all of us in West Texas, we find inspiration in the endless horizons and the vastness of this space, the opportunity it provides and the character of the people who call this home. Because of that inspiration and that character, we are able to be here today to witness this new enterprise that will be benefit generations to come. And Ginger, you asked, what is next? Well, we'll keep looking beyond that horizon. And as Cassidy said, as we say at Texas Tech, from here, it's possible. <laughs> so just a bit of housekeeping. Following the ribbon cutting, the Hub City Brass, and we're so grateful to the School of Music and these students who came here today We'll play the Matador song, and at this time, we will have the ribbon cut. All right. Now, a moment we've all been waiting for, a significant day as we cut the ribbon for the TTU School of Veterinary Medicine. Everyone help me count down. Five, four, 